So the next thing in the IP address sync part, we'll be talking, we'll be discussing on on the difference between the private and the public IP addresses. Now, whatever the IP addresses we can use, those addresses are actually divided into two categories. One is in the private IP address, and other one which are public IPs which can be used on the internet. So let's try to see the difference between the private and the public IP. But before that, let's try to understand why there is a need for a private and the public IP addresses. So, so take an example in my company, I got a LAN here. And in this LAN, it is connecting to some service portal, my ISP. And from this ISP, it's again connecting to some of my internet. And on the internet, I have, I have public servers hosted. Now my user sitting here, in my company, let's say the IP address of this user is 192.168.1.1 is trying to access the Yahoo server which is on the internet. So to access the Yahoo server, he need to type some open some URL and then type the URL path, open a website, open a web browser and then type the URL path www.yahoo.com. So the request goes to the router and the router forwards back to ISP and ISP finds where is the Yahoo server and the Yahoo server has to reply back. But now the question is, when you talk about internet, so internet is something where everyone is connected, every ISP, every organization is connected. So there is a possibility that there are some multiple users on the internet on a different location, different country, different uh, region, completely also might be using the same IP address. So there is a possibility because uh, the, stand, the IP addressing is standardized for everyone. So there is a possibility that there might be multiple users with the same IP. So the Yahoo server has to reply back to 182.168.1.1. But now the question is, will it reply back to this user somewhere here or this user or this user or this user or this user or to no one or to everyone? Because the communication happens completely based on IP addresses. So the source IP address is 192.168.1.1 and the Yahoo server has to reply back to 192.168.1.1. But the problem is there are multiple users. There might be multiple users with the same IP address. Now how to overcome this kind of issues? So to fix this kind of issues, then we have a something called public IP address. So what they did, they, they have classified the addresses and they said that if you want to go to internet, you need to use a registered public IP address. So which means if this user want to go to internet, he need to go with some public IP, 5111, let's say, example. And then when this user uh, want to go to internet, he will go with some public IP, some 100111, and this user will go with some other IP. And the good thing about this IP is it is globally unique. Now this IP will be globally unique, which means uh, once this IP address is registered with this company or with this user, it will be with this user as long as he is as he pays. You know, we can we can register some IP addresses, public IP with us, and it will be globally unique. It will not be given to anyone, and they are registered IP addresses. Okay, so every user when they go to internet, they need to purchase the public IPs. So these IPs are not free, of course. You need to pay to the service provider or to Aina to get these public IPs. Okay, so but the question is, what about the users who want to, um, who don't want to connect to internet, but they still want to communicate? So okay, so within my company, let's say I got one more branch office here, and I want this branch office and these two branch offices should communicate with each other without internet. So for this kind of connections which they have reserved some addresses called private addresses. Now the private addresses are opposite to public. They are uh, they are actually not reserved addresses. Like I got a difference in the table here. Now the private addresses are not recognized on the internet, which means you can use within your company, within your LAN or within your company. And this is something the administrator will decide what addresses it should be used. It will be unique, but within my organization, which means if I'm using 192.168.1.1, so there might be some user uh, in a different in different country or different region or different organization also using the same IP. So there won't be any problem because we are not talking to each other directly. So there won't be any problems. 
and they are like uh, like a free IPs you don't need to register they are unregistered IP addresses okay so within the land within your company if you're planning or designing any networks we can use this private uh, private networks okay so private addresses if you want to go to internet you need to have a public IP which is recognized on the internet and you have to contact the service border and you have to pay to the service border to get that and it will be globally unique so it will be only one and it is a registered IP addresses so so that's how they are classified the addresses uh, for different purposes for within the within the company within the organization or or if you want to go to internet but what if there might be some cases where you might be using some private IP addresses and I want these private users also want to talk to my other branch office here and also they should be able to access internet in that case what I should do so there is a solution for that uh, what we can do is we can allow these private IP addresses to go here and the router uh, it can be router or firewall also can do that it's, it can translate your private IP to go as a public IP address so we can translate our private users so they will go as a private here but when they go here to ISP they can they can get translated to a public IP address and they can send a request to the Yahoo server and they can reply back with a public IP now this Yahoo server will identify this request as a public IP and they can translate it back to a private IP address now this process we call as network address translation so we have a separate session separate class dedicated for NAT network address translation where we'll see how how to translate a private to public IP addresses and what are the different methods we can use to translate your private to public addresses like static NAT dynamic NAT and PAT we'll see more in detail on the NAT as we go ahead but here there is a classification of private and public IP addresses so the private addresses are the addresses which can be used within your organization and whereas the public addresses are the addresses which uh, which can be used uh, to communicate or to connect to internet okay so what are the differences so the private and public IP addresses there is a uh, this is a classification of addresses but now the question is how to identify the private addresses or public addresses so they have given some range there are certain addresses which are reserved as a private addresses so in the a class you know the range of a class it starts from 1 to 126 because we cannot use 0 we cannot use 127 total there are 1 to 126 in the a class uh, in that complete there is only one network that is 10.x anything starting with 10 is your private network remaining all are your public networks now similar way uh, similar way even in the B class uh, B class the range is 128 to 191 which means you can write you can you can take 128.0 combination like that if you take there are around 16,384 networks we get very big network and each and every network will have 65,000 addresses but out of that only 16 networks are private so anything starting from 172 to 16 to 172 31 which means 172 16 17 18 19 up to 31 so only this these networks are private so you need to you need to remember this range of addresses when we design our networks probably we prefer to use the private IP addresses within your organizations now similar way uh, in case of C class anything starting with 192 168 uh, it, uh, anything starting with 192168 will be identified as your private IP addresses and anything other than that will be always referred as public addresses so public IP addresses are very big uh, it's a very big range so it's very it's not easy for us to identify so that's the reason what we do here is we, we need to remember the private IP address range and then anything within this range referred as a private IP addresses and anything beyond this range will be identified as public addresses so let's take some example here so what I'll do is I'll take one I'll, I'll take an example to differentiate 172.35.10.10 .10. 
Now my question is this address belongs to a private IP or public IP. So it's a public address. The reason is anything between 16 to 31 is your private. It is 35 beyond 31. So it will be a public address. So anything coming within this range, you need to understand them as uh, private IP addresses. Anything beyond this range will be identified as public addresses. So the allocation of the private and the public addresses is done by INA, Internet Assigned Number Authority. So that's the author, uh, that's the authorized uh, government agency to look after the allocation of the public IPs. And the complete allocation of these IPs has been divided into different five regions based on that five regions. So this is your Asia Pacific region. And to have some more information on this, you can visit uh, the aina.org website. You can, you can go to aina.org. So there you'll find all this information here. If you just scroll down here a little bit. So IP addresses and AS numbers, you can see these are the five regions. So Africa region, Asia Pacific region here you can see Asia Pacific region this is my Africa region and then North America region Latin America and then these regions so we call them as five regions and if you click on this specific links to get into more information just click on this link it will redirect your specific region website and there you can you can find some information or if you if you go on to get some IP addresses you can contact them and here you will see this is a link which will uh, take you aina.org assignments ipv4 address space now it's going to show you the list of uh, the different assignments like like if you just come down a little bit here the tendor network the tendor network with a 28 slash 8 subnet mask this is for private purpose this is your 10.x.x.x network and then Lavender Network is for Department of Defense Internal Information System. Like that, the different blocks are registered, like 23 block is registered for this region wise. Similar way, this 36 block is reserved for APNIC, Asia Pacific region. Like that, these are all the allocations you will find on the website. Not really important, not really, not really required to know, but just a general information to know that this INA is going to assign this, all assigned already this, <coughs> address in different regions so if I, if I am in this region so I need to con the local service border will contact the specific region to get some public IP addresses and then this service border will allocate to small service borders from there again the customer will get those public IP addresses so if you are running a big size company you can even contact the big service borders or INA or the authorized registry to get your public IP addresses